however, one who is in an animalistic conception of life and has no spiritual culture cannot understand. As an expert mineralogist or geologist can understand where there is gold and can then invest his money to dig there and chemically separate the gold from the ore. An expert spiritualist can understand where the soul is within the matter. One who has not been trained cannot distinguish between gold and stone. Similarly, fools and rascals who have not learned from an expert spiritualist what is soul and what is matter we cannot understand the existence of the soul within the body. To understand such knowledge, one must be trained in a mystic yoga system and finally in a bhakti yoga system. As stated in the Bhagavad Gita 18.55, Bhaktiyama Abhidhyana unless one takes shelter of the bhakti yoga process, one cannot understand the existence of the soul within the body. Therefore, Bhagavad Gita begins by teaching. As the embodied soul continuously passes into his body, from boyhood to you to old age, the soul similarly passes into another body and death. The self-realized soul is not delivered by such a change. Thus, the first instruction is that one should understand that the soul is within the body and is transmigrating from one body to another. This is the beginning of spiritual knowledge. Any person who is not expert in understanding this science or is unwilling to understand it remains in the bodily conception or the animalistic conception of life. As confirmed in the Siddhartha, every member of the human society should clearly understand the instructions of the Bhagavad Gita. For only in this way can one be spiritually elevated and automatically give up the false illusory knowledge by which one thinks. I am this body and everything belonging to this body is mine and I am an empty. This dogish conception should be rejected immediately. One should be prepared to understand the spirit soul and the supreme spirit, God, who are eternally related. Thus, one may return home back to God, having solved all the problems of life. Om Ajnana Dimanda Syana Dimanda Nasa Kena Chakshana Dimanda Syana Dimanda Syana It's very friendly because it's concerned about the soul, not just on any chit chatting with each other. Right? Uh, friends, they have to exchange a lot of things which are lying to their heart, they have to exchange it. So, of course, Prahlad is a supreme friend, he, 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 he relates directly to the soul of a person. Because there are different levels of friendship and different levels of communicating friendship. But Prahlad is, you know, is a Uttamanatikari, is a Mahajan, <coughs> not only. <coughs> so, he feels so much uh, for his friends, his classmates, although they are all demons, materialists, hardcore materialists to the bone, 
Thank you for the ball. <laughs> totally identifying with the body. But he, he doesn't hold back. He says, I'm, I'm, I'm going to help my friends. I'm going to see if they come out of this miserable illusion. They're, they're moving around, but it's all illusion. It's all external. It's, there's no real substance. So I want my friends to wake up to the real, real nectar of life. That is the soul and the super soul. So he, he talks a lot, and so many points he brings out about the illusion of material family life, that we attach with the body, then don't try for happiness separately. As you start, you will get distress. You just give all your energy for Krishna consciousness. Yeah. But my friends, he says, I learned something in the womb. He was already very sharp. Just sitting in the womb, we, we, we don't become even very sharp when we are, you know, even grown up. So many points we are missing, so many points we don't take serious, so many points we one year in, one year out, and we are bubbling on in our own mental garbage, day in, day out, sometimes happy, sometimes distressed. Then we remember again, then we forget again, but love is not. Like this. He was here in the womb, sitting there in the womb, and he had his voice. <laughs> Never win, my God. And it's all ears, ears and heart. It's not only ear. You have two beautiful ears, but uh, the heart is more important. So it is said in the purport, Prabhupada writes, he was being educated in the womb. That's quite young he started. He said normally you start five years old, but he started much more earlier. <laughs> there are different levels of interest. And uh, <laughs> then uh, he said the powerful instruction of Narada Muni has woken me up. It was so powerful that whatever we learned afterwards in the academic uh, university of the demons of the the University of Iran, because it could, it could not enter his heart. It could not even properly enter his brain. Think he, he forgot a, a lot. <coughs> because if, 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 you, if your heart is not in the subject, your memory power goes down also. You, you cannot really remember much because you are not interested. There is no deep interest. Right? Cannot go. But uh, whatever you learn in the womb, although it's very small baby, he, he remembered every single detail. That's good. Because this is this is real knowledge. Right? This is real knowledge. It, 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 it's a, a living knowledge. Yeah? Material knowledge, academic knowledge is dead knowledge. It's technical knowledge. It has no life. Yeah? And when you move too much with that kind of knowledge, you also become lifeless or mechanical or external. You, you live life, you act, you interact, but it's all external, it's all superficial. It has no life in all these things. And also as devotees, we are absolutely not free of this. We are so deeply contaminated by this external behavior. It's all going on, but there is, there is no substance in the heart. It's not. But spiritual knowledge is different. Spiritual knowledge, once it starts acting in the heart, it's living knowledge, it's because it's about life. And life comes from life. And this title is so good, it's screaming like mad. It's the most revolutionary book I think we can have. Huh? <clears throat> anyway, Pralat came very alive because as a small boy sitting with his demonic friends, he says, I have, I have to tell you some points. Please sit down. <laughs> and uh, they like a lot because naturally a pure devotee is very attractive. He, 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 he shines and he's friendly, he's well wishing. It's natural that emanates from his personality. So well wishing, like anything. So although they didn't know what he's going to talk, so he said, okay, it looks nice, boy. And Prahlad, we like Prahlad. 
And uh, let's hear that yes to talk. First thing he says, I like this. Please. My dear friends, if you can just place your faith in my words. So I'm going to talk something. Don't just sit here like body present, mind absent, somewhere else. No, I want to, when the things I'm going to tell you now, I want to have, just not listen it technically, but have some faith in what I say. Not only in the intellectual presentation of the subject, more than that. Have faith in that spiritual dimension in that. So knowledge, Atma Tattva, includes automatically, I'm going to surrender, I'm going to give myself. So that kind of thing. I'm going to bow down eh, to that knowledge, to that information, to this life, to this knowledge. I'm going to submit myself. So that's what he asks first, because demons we know they will never surrender to anything, only to their own material desires. So he has a big challenge how to catch these fellows, that they really will go down, that they will have submissive surrender and wants to listen in a, in a humble mood. So he asks that, yeah. if you can please put your faith in my words. And why that faith? Simply by that faith you can understand transcendental knowledge. Just like me, although you are small children. So, <coughs> what is the... Uh, <coughs> faith, spiritual faith is difficult for hardcore materialists, for small children, right? and those of lower birth, they, 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 as, as one is identified with the body, we cannot have faith. The more we are attached to this body and the bodily urges, and our faith goes down in the transcendence. Yeah? Shall I do this or that? Then we choose for the body, not for the soul. And like this, it's a whole psychology inside. So, those who are more and more bodily identified, they can have less and less faith. Remember, the process of Krishna consciousness is the development of faith. It starts with a little faith that Krishna is God and I am his devotee, and these people also are devotees, it seems. And, uh, but that is just the beginning. Just 1% faith, then you can enter into the system of purification. But then it has to come from 2% to 5%. 10%, 20%, 50%, and we can judge ourselves at which percent I am. 2% or 3%? I'm asking myself. <laughs> you have a long way to go. Faith in Krishna, faith in Guru, every single part of it, 